As I was trying to identify blind spots that I've had in my life, one incident that came up was uh, when I was playing for Atlanta and one of my teammates, Tabo Cephalosha, he, uh, he had his leg broken by the police. And my first reaction was, man, what was Tabo doing out last night? What was Tabo doing to get his leg broken by the police? Because in my head, right, I would, that would not happen to me unless I was doing something wrong. Tabo must have done something wrong. That's where my head went first. What am I known for on the court? I guess I'm known for shooting. You know, it's kind of been my thing. When it came to understanding race and the complexities of race, I, I certainly, as a white man, didn't think I knew it all, but because I've been in the NBA for a bunch of years and because I have white friends and I have black friends, I felt like well, I probably didn't understand it all, but I kind of got it, I, probably. I certainly didn't feel like I was a part of a problem. But when I was in Atlanta, Black Lives Matter was started. And I'm sitting here in conversations with white friends and with black friends, and I'm having two completely different conversations. Like, don't all lives matter? But I'm also in relationship with people who are experiencing these days and these stories and this movement completely differently. And it was in that moment where I was like, I don't, I don't get it. If I wanna be a real teammate, if I wanna be not just a better friend, but an actual friend, I have some work I gotta do. Tabo's my guy. And I assumed I took the police aside right away in that moment. That was hard for me to wrestle with. I'm not proud of that moment, but that's one that I could share because I think other people can connect to that. And so that was the beginning of a whole new path for me. It's been challenging, but I imagine the players who came before me who risked everything by using their platform to create change. Players like Craig Hodges, he was one of the very few that saw the platform they had and wanted to use it in this space. When I think about the tradition of athletes that I want to be a part of, men and women who have stood up and spoken up, the kind of OG I think about is Craig Hodges. I first heard of Craig when I was a kid. Three times I watched him win the NBA three-point contest on TV. I was a shooter, so it was only natural to admire a guy who could hit from just about anywhere on the floor. But the truth was, I didn't even know about all the other kinds of shots he was brave enough to take. In 1991, he was on the Bulls, playing in the finals against Magic Johnson and the Lakers. Craig went up to the stars with an idea. They boycott game one in LA to advocate for more black representation in the league office and with the team owners, but no one else was willing to go along with the plan. A few months later though, Craig went to the White House with his championship team. He wore a white dashiki, shook the president's hand, and then handed over a letter that had proposals for what the White House could do for black communities in America. He'd never hear back. Those were just a few of the more publicized incidents. Behind the scenes in a locker room, Hodges pushed his peers to speak out more. This was a time when athletes didn't speak out much, and Craig was waived by the Bulls after the 1992 season. Even though he was only 32 in the league's reigning three-point contest champ, Craig Hodges would never play another NBA game. Four years later, he filed a lawsuit against the league, saying he'd been blackballed for the way he spoke out. While the lawsuit was dismissed, it's hard to know how much money his voice may have cost him or how many championship rings. But it's safe to say Craig Hodges didn't care nearly as much about that as he did about what needed to be said and what needed to be done, about the injustice he just couldn't live with. You put it that way, and you realize that us players today are the descendants of Craig Hodges as much as we are of any big star or legend. Every time we use our voice, every time we do something with our platform, we're following in his footsteps. And as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of work left to be done. The culture of the NBA now involves using your platform to speak out for good. That's part of what it means now to play in the NBA. When Craig Hodges was playing, it obviously wasn't. He was one of the very few 
that saw the platform they had and wanted to use it in this space. You know, his voice wasn't heard in the moment. He planted the seed that has caught on. His legacy will forever be that he was one of the players that started guys speaking up and using their voice and understanding that we have a platform and that we have to take advantage of it. Privilege is one of these words that just throws people. We stereotype a lot of white people who act a certain way, have certain prejudices, but I can't pass judgment. You don't know what you don't know. As white people, we don't want to show where we've missed. But part of this whole thing shifting is us owning our own stories. That takes hard conversations, and that's where we have to be. Those are the conversations that we have to have. I believe in the good of people, and I want to call on the good in each of us to take that step forward. Race is tied to virtually every single issue, every hot topic in our country. You have to be able to dig into this. You have to be able to hear it. And so it's important to have an open mind and an open heart.